travel. He travels to Belgium to see the young nuns. My father will pay. May I deceive you? May I leave aside the veil and stay in a narrow hotel near a construction site? May I take an unscheduled leave to see Maria Chiesito? May I watch and discover what our sister was thinking? There are enough men, finally, to make one wonder. She is enough an individual to expose something in myself or, well, someone nearly like me. Two nuns are on trial for the deaths of 7,000. Glory. 
rained heavily. The rain makes the clouds bright even at night. The rain makes the ground bright as setting concrete. Hundreds stand as rain would stand if it could get back up off the ground, pissed off. There were many of them, and more kept coming. They could not all take shelter at the health center and wanted to come inside the compound of the monastery. They reached the entrance, but the gate, always open, was locked. Faced with the cries of the children, the wailing and shaking of the soaked refugees, nearly all of the sisters told Gertrude she should let the refugees take shelter. There was no shortage of space. The monastery had a hostel, a chapel, other empty rooms. Gertrude refused. She loved all the dogs. We tried to climb in. Pregnant women were climbing. Others managed to get through the cypress heat and in between the barbed wire. The tall Taya Girwa was trying to climb in when she fell off with her baby, injuring her head. They come through. They swallow paper and write on it with their insides. We read their potted poetry smeared on the wall and then scrub it as if it was just another day. Judito came and took the children, myself included, down to the cellar where they made communion wafers. But she came back later and drove us out. <laughs>
for God, for food, in vain. On 20th April, between 5 and 7 30 p.m., I went to see my friend Gaspar and Sakana, their assistant Babo Master of Boma, who lives next to the monastery. Gatru Mukangango and Julien Chisto joined me there. We talked about Javier Manas then. I did like the man, but I did want him to die. We were sad that his plane had been shot down by the Yensi. 
Sister Gertrude said we must avenge him. She said that Sindikuwawo was right to call the Hutus of Butare Tibindeva. He led the militia and some ex-soldiers and used to drive the nuns ambulance using a microphone inside which called the Hutus to kill the Tutsis. They had given him the vehicle so he could accompany them in town while they did their shopping. On 20th April 1994, I became intimate with the nuns. I exchanged confidences with them. You see all these tutsis in the monastery. You cannot say where they'll hide my dead body. They could kill me.
I am the music. To hear me when you walk, and I tell you, joy is good hard work. I have seen you dance. Some of you sweat. Who is waiting by the wall? Now everybody wants. Everybody sweats. This is good. Clear the brush. Check wits. More room for dancing. Eat the cattle. More room for dancing. Pick up your feet and bring them down. Scatter the cockroaches. There was a revolution in 59. There's a party every day. There's one road out. A long road. The road given us by God. Put the Motani back in the river and send them home to Egypt. They are now too fat, running, shining in the waters. Pharaoh has a home for them in the cities of the day. We are, we do not need to sleep. A young man, I'm a young man. The purpose of the river is to make room for me. The purpose of cultivation is to make room. Make room! Do you understand this? Do you accept this? Then we are under attack from within and without. We must pull together the sharpest voices and most extreme suggestions are not extreme enough. We may have to kill people. Do you accept this responsibility? We do have to kill people. We are have to kill people. Working together, time for Me. 
When the baby fell to the ground, he was already dead. I felt something warm on my face. I tried to get up. They hit me on the head three times with a machete. They say it all for me. This one is called Domatil. Among the mics of Sister Maria Tupito, that daughter Semaniano so good. She was in the middle with her brothers who were with the attackers. She was giving them a list. Next to Sister Tupito was a man called Karangwa who was dancing in front of her with a spear in his hand. It was 10 in the morning. The little hours for the spurs come blind, bitches. One more day and Christ will come. One more day and Christ will there were a lot of people in the garage. They said they would have to burn them because they had barricaded the door. Rekarahu came with Kazito and two cans of petrol. Rekarahu said, Our sisters have come to our aid. He gave one of the cans to Vincent Yamboka, who had some dry grass. Vincent packed the grass in a ditch they had dug by the garage wall and poured the petrol out. <coughs> I saw Casil, stoned to death. Ngabaniza was cut to pieces. Bernadette came out burning to death. Many people died inside the garage. I saw the daughter of Semenyana, that is Sister Julienne Casito, with a second seven liter jerrick and a petrol. She gave it to an interahamwe from her family called Nyonsenga. He poured the petrol over Kaburiji and set him on fire. Kaburiji ran while burning. I was there. That was the day my family died. You see how wicked these sisters are? They have torn up their banknotes so the Hutus cannot use them. They should all be killed. Open up! No! Okay, no! There are too many to move to the little one they see. Let me out. No! Let me out. No! They're going too heavy to break through. Now they have more people on the outside. Thirteen strong, making garlands. Praying rosaries is making songs we gather to crown the gift of bloody hope. What were we doing when we laid the branches? We were praying. We are always praying. Hide me, Mary. Hide me. I believe. It was Mary who braided the crown of thorns. And this is the mother of the rosary. All saints lay in flame. She made coffee in a dead woman's mouth with a teaspoon of herbs. She made bread out of chewed grass on the dead woman's belly. She made gasoline out of wet nerves inside the dead woman's teeth and siphoned it in 
the seventh beer bottle. She makes candles out of a woman's eyes. She makes beer from fat. She pulls a city out of the salt at the base of a woman's throat with tweezers. She is Japanese.
Belgian trial under a new law. Oh, is that good? Good. I am not ready to go to court. Don't be an idiot. For how long will we go to jail? For many years. Can we receive this phone call? Yes. Did you that? I will recommend against it. But yes, we sure. Are, we are none. Cloistered Benedictine nuns. Vows of silence. We live in cells. Yes. So what is jail? Nothing. Perhaps the facts of this I am not able to imagine. Yes. I leave in Belgium now. Trial in a foreign language comes true floating as in a dream. The full formal weight of Polark's arcs demented rock pile brought to bear on these small few. Bad nuns, but ridiculous first trial. These are the best genocidaires you could find to test your law? When they touch the hem of Christ's robe and be healed. You may touch the hem of genocide, and if you believe, you may suffer. Do I have to choose? Do I believe in genocide? If I can believe in Christ, why can't I believe in genocide? My heart is a jerry can, a jerry can of gasoline. My mind is evaporation. My fingers are my shadow, and my body is a lie.
shops and buy chocolate and popcorn. They are exhausted by eating. They are so coated like cockroaches. Given what was done, we did nothing. We know how to pay for people, how to bury them. It could be of use. Crash. I may crash. What is 
my one hope for life. I hope I make friends. I hope even craftsmen I make friends. The young white man seeks to observe his children. He's with the unfold defendants here testimony while secured in a big glass box. There are men on trial too, but these are not um, Strange enough, the Teresa are not as strange as family. Teresa does not know that there are cookies and fishes in the audience. She does not yet understand the connectedness of the world. Maria Chisco still loves us. She still loves the audience. I watch her every day. I am the empathy fairy, the atrocity Tinkerbell. <laughs> My French is not very good. Actually, neither is my piano. I was a busy woman. Now I am a busy woman with nothing to do. She dresses like an out of public man I can stand. That haircut, that collar, those shoes, worldwide. with the help? 
with the matches. With the ink.
I absolutely promise we won't spend more than 20 minutes together. Okay? So we'll start with Alfred. You may go out the front door tonight. this end can join me. Emily will join me. The cast has to he's, we'll introduce ourselves in just a second. You want us to move closer? Yeah, you can come on down. There's not a lot of us and we won't be here very long. Um, Noka insists that we be out of the building by five. And so they're gonna be cleaning up here like crazy. And at one point we're gonna move out we're gonna move out to the lobby. ourselves. Uh, my name is Jerry Strapicki. I'm a, a, a theater artist. I work with community and story around the country. I live in Pennsylvania. I am a member of the Art Spot Board. Um, and I, uh, I, I did have an opportunity to travel to Rwanda with the playwright Eric Ann and a group of folks. And it was there that I met Emily. And I was traveling with Jeff, who was the designer of this. And uh, we spent the night in Sofi. And so I'll just say before the other introduction that the first question that comes up always, is this stuff true? Did this happen? Did this occur at this, at this, with these Benedictine nuns? The answer is yes, yes. And every little factoid you hear in the play is absolutely true. And Eric doesn't tell the worst of the stories. It is what occurred, did occur. And so that's where this reflection begins. So. Introduce, please. Hi, I'm Suzanne Brown. I'm also a um, member of the board of Art Spot. Um, but as a, the rest of my life, I'm a public health professional, and I've had an opportunity to work with Rwanda for several years, uh, 10 years and a half. Um, yeah, um, started in 2003, so we've been here about six. Um, and we've been um, moved by the community there.
different use of a phrase or words. They could be ones that you love. They could be ones that you hate for a variety of reasons. They could be ones that you're struggling with. Um, musical phrase, let's just hear them, just a, in a couple of words. I'll start. For me, hi. Do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Sure. Just say, just say hey, your name. Hey, I'm Sherry Marina. I live here in New Orleans. Hi. Hi. So we're going to start with that with that popcorning of images, and you guys can provide that too. And it's, it's different each time. But for me, today the image was uh, as you guys are describing the people climbing the wall with the very gentle climbing of fingers across the face. So, oh, oh, hi. You all know the Kathy Ray. White rice. The white rice on the light bulb. Another. The single. The single. And um, Sean, who helped compose all that and arrange all that, some of them are found songs, um, is here. And he's working like crazy. We'll pass that one. Is there, is there significance to the clapping away? No. The movement? <laughs> that movement? Um, the clapping away is something he's confused with. So. No, oh, well, it was confused a lot. It didn't understand. I, it was. Well, for me, it has two meanings. One is that it's quieter to do it like this because uh -huh. we don't want to overpower our voices, and that it also feels accusatory. We're, like we're the one of the main refrains in that is "She lies to us to be told lies to us. She lies to us." Other um, images or moments. You want to introduce me? Introduce myself? Just say hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Lauren. Lauren, one of our cast members. Oh, Monica. Monica. Hi. Hello. Okay. Kathy Gate. Other, other images that, that people have, and, and yes, we're popcorning images of things that today hang with you. Just a segue briefly to questions. People have curiosity, and then we're going to go outside in like five minutes into the lobby and we're going to be happy with you. Um, people have uh, questions about Rwanda. We have a, someone with ex extraordinary experience here. All our, our Ugandan actors have spent time in Rwanda as well, and they're certainly lifetime experts on East Africa. So questions that we have while we have these folks here. What do you think of the um, kind of absence of knowledge <coughs> of what went on in Rwanda in East America? The fact that we don't know about yeah, it? Yeah, just as much as people don't know. Let me, let me ask you, let's map this right here a little bit, just with a show of hands. Um, how many people here have read a book on the genocide? Just curious. How many people have um, saw the movie Hotel Rwanda? And that may be your source. Mm -hmm. How many people learned of it through news reports? 
Can you remember where you were when you heard of the genocide in 1994? You were in elementary nine. school and you were nine. And where were you? I was what? in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. I better remember where I was 20 years ago. That's part of, that's part of our, our answer. I mean, I was in Bloomsburg and I, you know, I remember thinking, oh, huh, not again. And it wasn't until I got there that it became real to me. Like, I heard, of, I remember hearing about it. I was, I was in Chicago, but I, it's not one of those like. Actually, tonight, September 11th, I came to the image of the plane falling out of the sky for the first time. That was like a new thing that I was like, oh, how? So it didn't have the September. Like I can tell you. But um, it was a couple of years, it was in 99, I think, I was um, at the Odeon Theater doing a training and there was a woman from Hungary who had done a film in Rwanda and she shared the film with us and that was my first, it's so four, it's five years later that I first like saw something of what had happened. Let me lay our question now with our, our, our African guests. You're in Uganda at the time, you're in the next country over. What, where were you and what was your response to what was happening there? Now, Uganda was not without troubles, either. Uh, uh, like, uh, to go back to the question, the first question that you asked about the group of the Uganda, I have my like personal reservations about that particular film. It has problems. It has but lots of problems yeah. and, and lots of factual problems. And especially when you go to Rwanda, you get to know that actually probably some stuff from the film. I think for me as a person, and I don't impose it on anyone, the one film that I think is closer to the truth is uh, titled Sometimes in April. And, and it's on YouTube where uh, anyone can, can just go and watch it. I think that movie is a lot closer, far, far closer to, to the truth. Uh, back then, I, I'm 31 years. Uh, back then, how old was I? 20 years back, 11. Uh, um, I, I, was, I was brought up by a granny who was dealing in fish business, smoked fish business. Uh, what I remember, I was so young, but the sales went so, so low because people, people in Uganda stopped eating fish because uh, when people were killed in Rwanda, they were thrown onto the lakes and then dead bodies found themselves across Uganda. And then, so uh, stories were heard of uh, human body parts being found in, in, in the fish. And, and so people really, really abandoned eating fish for like close to a year because they were scared uh, of human hair found in, in the fish or certain things. And, and I remember uh, pictures on, on, on television back then, I could have been young, but it's, it's quite a memory of, of seeing uh, uh, human bodies floating in water. And, and I think that's one experience that I carry. And it affected me personally because this is where we were getting food at home. And, and so the job was, what the income of the family was. Exactly. Oh, oh, the, the same thing happened all in the neighboring East African countries in terms of not eating fish or, or uh, because so many bodies, one of the mythos is that the Tutsi had come from uh, downriver. It's a myth that it was the mythos and put them in the river, put the bodies in the river, sent them home was something that occurred. So millions, well, hundreds of thousands, the, the genocide killed somewhere between 100,000 and a million. Um, many were thrown into the rivers. We, because they need to clean here, I'm gonna ask you to pick up your stuff and we'll reconvene in the lobby and continue this in maybe just a few more minutes. Oh, 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 oh,